what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make classic Chicago-style Italian beef sandwiches from scratch. We're gonna make the jardinera, the bread, the beef, and of course, the jus. To get started, I need to make the spicy, oily, pickled vegetable known as jardinera. For that, I've got cauliflower, celery, green bell peppers, serrano chilies, and baby carrots. Now, I'm gonna throw a small dice into all five of these veggies. I've got 150 grams of each of them with the exception of these serranos. I've got just 75 grams of those. And beware, these are really spicy. Feel free to either use less of them or use jalapenos in their place, which are less spicy. And use gloves to keep the heat off your hands and your wiener. Once all these veggies are chopped into a small dice, I'm gonna toss everything in this bowl to combine. In total, this should yield about one full quart or a full liter of finished jardinera. Over at the stove, I've got my pickling liquid for this coming up to a boil. That's 400 grams of white stilled vinegar, 200 grams of water, and 24 grams of salt. Once that's all at a rolling boil, in goes the chopped veggies. I'm going to turn off the heat and let this mixture cook as it cools down to about room temperature. The pickle brine here is really quite salty and quite sour. Too much for a regular pickle for sure, but these are going to be bathed in oil later on, so we need intensity in the veg to cut through all all that fat. Once this is cooled off into a quart container it goes and from there I'm gonna let this jar continue to pickle and become acidified in the fridge for two whole days. Up next is the bread part of this sandwich. This is some grocery store stuff that was labeled as French rolls. They aren't that great honestly. Get something from a proper bakery if you can. The problem with this grocery store stuff is that it's kind of brittle. It's definitely not strong enough to hold the wetness of this sandwich and it's dry. We can do better for sure. So to make proper French rolls for this beef sandwich, I'm going to grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'm going to measure 225 grams of warm water, 9 grams of yeast, 20 grams of olive oil, 15 grams of sugar, 350 grams of strong bread flour, and 9 grams of salt. The dough hook goes on, and now I'm going to mix this on low speed just until things come together for about three minutes. When the dough is clumped up into a mass like this, I'm going to turn the mixer up to high speed and mix for an additional six minutes more. This dough is going to need all of that time in the bowl. Part of what allows the sandwich rolls they use in Chicago to stand up to all that beef jus is a well-developed strong gluten network that has a really good chew to it. After nine minutes total of mixing, this dough is super strong and does not tear at all when we give it a hard tug like this. Into the bowl it goes, the lid goes on, and now I'm gonna let this ferment on the counter for 90 minutes. After that 90 minutes, this dough has grown by quite a bit, but you will notice that we did not do any strength building folds during the fermentation here, so it's gonna deflate a little bit when we pop that lid, and that's totally fine. We're gonna be adding a lot more strength right now. To start shaping, I'm gonna flour my dough, then the board, and then I'm going to divide these into two equal size pieces that are roughly 300 grams a piece. From there, I'm going to pre-shape these into nice, taut, round balls. And if you aren't familiar, pre-shaping both brings needed structure to the dough before we turn it into a final loaf shape, and it also gives us uniform pieces to use as a starting point in the shaping process. Once these are rounded off, they're going to get covered with a tea towel, and I'm going to let them rest here for 15 minutes. After that 15 minutes, now it's time to shape. To do that, I'm going to flip one of these out of the way, and then I'm going to flip the other one on its back and now I'm going to shape these like a baguette. Start by pulling out the dough on each side to get a wide rectangle. Now working from the bottom up, I'm going to roll this dough into a tight little cylinder thing by rolling it forward and pulling back. Once this is rolled up into a nice taut tube, next I'm going to come back with my fingertips and thumbs in a triangle shape and then use those to roll this into a longer, wider piece of dough. Now I'm going to flatten the ends real quick and repeat that for dough ball two and then I'm going to grab a sheet tray with some parchment paper. I'll hit that with a generous dose of cornmeal or semolina flour. And finally, I'm gonna give these tubes one final rollout to make sure that they're proper sandwich length and width. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna smush these down real quick to make sure that they actually are a little bit wider than they are tall. This is gonna give us a much more sandwich friendly shape of bread. Now I'm gonna cover this with a sheet tray and let it proof here on the counter for 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the temperature of your house. 45 minutes later, when I look back at these, they're all proofed up and they've grown in size by about 75% or so. Now I'm gonna score these with my bread razor here real quick, tip to tip, BB. Next, I'm gonna load these into a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven or 190 C and bake for about 30 minutes. Baking bread at such low temperature is new territory for me. I'm usually all about that thick chewy crust, but since this style of bread has almost equal parts crust to crumb, having a thick rustic crust actually means torn up mouths and hard to eat sandwiches. So lower temps allow that crust to set up slower and it becomes a thinner, more sandwich friendly texture. After that 30 minutes, take a look. I'm just delighted how these turned out. They have a great shape. They've got a thin, tender crust, cornmeal on the bottom, you guys. It's gonna be a perfect vehicle for the absolute slop fest of Italian beef that is coming our way. Speaking of beef, here we go. For this sandwich, I've chosen to go with a respectable lean roast of meat called Top Round Roast. This is from the sirloin. It has a little bit more fat than just straight up rump roast, but anything from the back end of the cow should work fine as long as it has some intramuscular fat. I've got two two pound roasts here, one pound for each sandwich roll. These 
people shrink a lot, so don't be scared if you're like, okay, I need a pound of meat, bry. Over at the stove, I've got my large Dutch oven preheating, and into that, I'm gonna add three to four glugs of neutral high temp cooking oil, and then I'm gonna add in two roasts at a time. No salt, no pepper. We're mainly adding these in to get some browned beef stuff on the bottom of the pot. That's gonna be great for fortifying the beef shoe, which if you don't know, beef shoe is like the crux of this sandwich, and making it as intensely beefy as possible is a serious priority. At some point, I'm gonna rotate in the second two pieces of beef. And don't worry if the sears on the outside of this aren't perfect, it's all about the jus, not the exterior of the meat. Once the bottom of my pot is well coated in seared beef fond, I'm gonna deglaze this thing with a thousand grams or roughly one quart of really nice beef stock if you've got it. If you don't got it, we're gonna make some right now, or if you don't want to, we can definitely cheat this later on. In my opinion, great beef stock comes from beef shanks because shanks have tons of connective tissue and tons of beef flavor. That's all the stuff that we want. Here I've roasted about six to eight pounds of beef shanks in a really hot oven for about 30 minutes until they are very, very golden brown, just like these ones. Now to make these into stock, I'm gonna grab my instant pot and use it like a slow cooker. In my opinion, doing this on the countertop is a lot easier and more passive than doing it on top of the stove top where there's flames and stuff. Now I'm gonna put these shanks into my instant pot and then add some water onto the sheet tray to scrape up all that roasty brown stuff that's super valuable. And once everything's in there, I'm gonna add two kilos or liters or two quarts of water and slow cook, not pressure cook this for six hours. No veg, no herbs, just beef. Six hours later, as you can see, this stuff looks beautiful. It's dark and beefy, it's sticky, and everything we need for insane beef sandwich shoe. So once that's in my beef pot, now I'm gonna add in my top secret Italian beef spice mix, which is not a secret at all, actually. It's five grams each of dried oregano, garlic powder, onion powder, toasted coriander seed, chili flake, paprika, toasted venom seed, and black pepper. Shake it all up, and there we go. Brian's super secret Chicago-style beef spice. Available west of 290 in Lombard in Chicagoland. Now into the pot that spice blend goes and as you can see I've nestled all four beef chunks into this stock and once that's up to a simmer I'm gonna top this with a cut out piece of parchment paper to keep this beef from drying out and then I'm gonna load this whole thing into a preheated 250 degree Fahrenheit 120C oven and cook for about 60 minutes. After that 60 minutes it's time to check on the beef. Essentially we have just made wet roasted beef. Yeah that sounds pretty weird but that's how they do it in the beef shops. These guys are not like classically trained French chefs. They make sandwiches and they do what works. Now to check done this, I'm gonna grab my instant read thermometer and see where it's at. We're at about 145 degrees Fahrenheit. That's gonna coast up to a slightly higher temp as it cools. Next, I'm gonna steal a move from the catering world and wrap these beefs with plastic wrap while they are still warm and then throw them in the refrigerator to rest and cool at the same time. The plastic wrap helps keep the moisture from evaporating off the meat and kind of seals in the juices, literally. Props to Ethan Chablowski, fellow YouTuber and culinary bad boy for reminding me that this was an option. But if you're weird about plastic, don't worry about it, just skip that and cool down the beef in the juice. As for the jus, we're gonna strain that off, get all the spices out of there, and then cool that down with the beef until we're ready to eat the beef. While that cools, let's finish the jardinera real quick. This stuff's been pickling in the fridge for two days now, and it's time to finish it off. I'm gonna drain off all of this super sour, super salty pickle brine and replace it with 300 grams of neutral oil. I'm using a light colored olive oil here, and then 150 grams of regular extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna give that a stir to combine, and there we have it, handmade jardinera. Jardinera. This stuff gets better as it marinates in the fridge. It kind of becomes something else. It unifies into something really special. But if you don't have time or interest to make this yourself, there should be something store-bought available like this that is still very great. It's less intense for sure and a little less fun, but as far as store-bought foods go, nothing to stick your nose up at here. I can definitely recommend store-bought jarred, Back to the beef. We've arrived at the main dilemma of a good Chicago beef. How do you slice it tissue paper thin? Hand slicing is definitely a possibility and not a bad option if it's your only option and you own a sharp knife. You won't get tissue paper thin slices, but if you don't overcook it in the jus later, it will be tender and tasty and probably worth your time. Option two is to not roast the beef yourself, but instead opt to buy very thinly sliced roast beef from the grocery store. And when I say very thinly sliced, I mean shaved basically. Buy the stuff as thin as they can possibly get it. But the dilemma here with buying sliced roast beef is that we do not have delicious jus from the cooking process, so we will need to cheat the system a little bit. To do that, take one quart of strong beef stock, add in the secret spice blend, and then a few tablespoons of beef bouillon paste. That's right, I endorse it for this recipe because I guarantee that most, if not all of the beef shops in Chicago use some form of concentrated beef paste to season their jus. As a chef, you'll have to trust me that the economics of making jus from bones at scale in a beef 
beef restaurant just doesn't make sense. At Loafers, we made our beef jus with beef shanks, as you will see in this video, and the Italian beef sandwich, even at $14, did not really make us any money. So using beef bouillon is okay in my book. I recommend the paste like this better than bouillon product, as you can see. The powdered stuff tends to taste a little bit like beef ramen, which is not great in my opinion. Once that's all simmered together for about 30 minutes, I'm gonna strain off the spices and then bring it back to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm gonna dunk in that store-bought beef. At this point, the beef is gently gonna cook in that 140 degree beef shoe, and there you go. Tender, sloppy, good, but not great Chicago style beef. The final option, the best option, and the one that I've gone for in this video is using a deli slicer to slice the stuff that we just cooked into tissue paper thin slices. Because of my job, I have access to a meat slicer, so it's kind of like cheating. You guys probably won't be able to do this, but once I've got this stuff sliced, I'll get it back to my house, and I'm gonna get my jus set up to finish off this sandwich. We're gonna do this pretty similar to how we just did it a second ago. Into my saucepan goes the jus I cooked the beef in. Then I'm gonna sneak in a spoonful of that better than bouillon paste that I was just telling you about. Trust me, the pros are supercharging even the best beef shoes with this stuff, at least I think. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Over at the stove, we're gonna taste this for seasoning. Again, this stuff needs to be very salty. It is not soup. It should be very intense and you should not really be able to comfortably drink more than a few tablespoons of this stuff at a time. Once that's seasoned and up to temperature, in this case, 145 degrees Fahrenheit or 62 C, I'm gonna turn the heat to its lowest setting to maintain and then I'm gonna add in all my beef. I'm putting in about eight to 10 ounces per sandwich, a lot basically. And then after about 30 seconds or so of bathing in nice salty beef shoe, that meat should be ready to go. It's thin and just a little rosy in some spots and just looks super perfect. Bread wise, no need to toast or warm up what we made earlier. Room temp is actually preferred. I'm just gonna cut this in half and then lop off the ends and cut it in half to open it up. As far as the build of this sandwich goes, I'm gonna show you how I do it, but there are a lot of ways to play here. A lot of things look like success. Basically for me, I lift the beef out of the jus and then drip it liberally all over the bread and repeat. I think this would technically be called wet. I go out of my way to get a bunch of juice on the bread, but still leave some areas untouched and dry. Once that's loaded up with beef, next goes on the jardinera and I layer it on super thick. This is probably my favorite part of the sandwich. And I top the whole thing with additional jus just to make sure that it's the right amount of wet. From here, some people add roasted sweet bell peppers, which in most beef places means overcooked sauteed green bell peppers. Those are not really my favorite. Also, those were not really an option at the suburban places I grew up beefing at when I was young, and they aren't my truth, but feel free to throw sweet peps on your beef. Finally, to bring this to a pro level, this sandwich needs to be wrapped tightly with parchment paper. This move alone forms the whole thing from a mess into a nice tight package that you can actually call the sandwich, and it's 75% less likely to fall apart when you eat it. And you can see, when you cut into this parchment, all of that hard work has finally paid off. We've got a tight, well-built sandwich that hits all the details we want and honestly looks like something straight out of a paper bag from Johnny's or Al's Beef. And if you wanna be an absolute psycho about it, dip this entire sandwich into that jus. A lot of Chicago people go for that. It basically makes the bread into paste and it's no longer a sandwich. It's not for me, but the world is yours basically. Now you have the tools to make a real deal Italian Chicago beef in your home. I really hope you give it a try. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, a huge thank you to everybody who supports this channel on Kofi. If you guys aren't familiar with Kofi, the link will be down in the description. It's a great way to support what I'm doing here on the channel. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end and we'll see you next time.